Okay, so next up we have Hardy Mesha, who's running for U.S. Congress. And that's Representative Two. My name's Hardy Mesha, running for U.S. Congress, District 2, against Charlie Bass and Ann Custer. I'm a small business owner. I have a software development company that creates iPhone apps and Android apps. I've been doing this for 19 years now. I moved my business to New Hampshire five years ago. I have now have five employees. I hire a bunch of interns from UNH each summer to kind of get them on the job experience because coming out of, UN, coming out of college, students don't have the job experience they need to go into the workforce and get a job um, doing that. So running, I'm running as a libertarian. So for those that don't know what a libertarian is, libertarians believe in basically they're socially accepting and fiscally responsible, so fiscally conservative. So we need to balance the budget. We can't afford a $1.3 trillion deficit year after year. We can't afford a $16 trillion debt. And I'm not going to get, get up here and blame it on, just on Obama because the Republicans and Democrats are both equally um, at, to blame for this. Uh, the Republicans probably gave us $7.5 trillion, Democrats $8.5 trillion, whatever, but they're both equally to blame for it. Uh, and now our GDP is, our debt is 100% of our GDP. So that's usually a pretty big warning sign in most countries, whether it's Portugal, Spain, Greece, that our economy is going the wrong direction, our government's going the wrong direction. When I got, I got involved in politics uh, in 1992 with Ross Perot, and what I liked about Ross Perot was he was up there, he was saying things that he was different from the Republicans and the Democrats, and he was focused on balancing the budget. All the same issues from 92 still apply to us today. Uh, we still need to balance the budget. So what Ross Perot did though, when he got included in the debates, was he focused the issue on balancing the budget. And what happened was we had a Republican Congress and President Clinton who ended up balancing the budget for us. And this is, okay. All right, so now, now we'll open it up to um, questions. Okay, so Marty, if you're elected, what will be your highest priority? Balancing the budget. So I, I, <laughs> Um, I probably I have three priorities. So, so the first one is we need a balanced budget. We need a balanced budget in 2013, not a balanced budget in 30 years or 40 years, like you know the Paul Ryan plan. You know, Republicans are like, oh, we need a balanced budget. They're full of it. They're they're not going to balance budget anytime soon. They're just going to keep spending like they have been spending. So, balanced budget, end the wars. We need to bring the troops home. That's all the wars, every place we're at. We need to cut the budget 43 percent. And to cut the budget 43 percent, we need to look at all the programs, and that's social programs, and that's military too. So if we cut the military spending by 43%, which is what would be needed to balance the budget, that would take us all the way back to 2003 levels. So I think we were safe enough in 2003 that we probably can cut, figure out a way to cut 43% out of the military budget to get to a balanced budget so we don't have a collapsed economy. Because if our economy collapses or we hit hyperinflation or you know just superinflation, um, then we're not going to be able, able to even to afford to take care of the people that need taken care of, whether that's Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. We need to take care of the problem of the budget right now. Great. Okay. And what is your preferred tax policy? Okay. Well, our current tax policy sucks. I'm a small business owner. Um, it's costly, it's complicated, and it's corrupt. It's costly because it costs us cost taxpayers anywhere between $300 billion and $600 billion every year just in compliance costs. So that's paying for your tax software, your accountant, all the time you spend filling out your, you know, your 10W40, your 1044. And you know, even the IRS agents don't know what's involved in the tax code. If you call them up, you have a 50-50 chance of getting the wrong answer. So it's definitely costly. It's complicated because the IRS agents don't even know what's in it for the most part. It's 70,000 pages of tax code and <coughs> regulations. And it started out as only 100 pages, so, so we need to simplify the tax code. And corrupt. We have hundreds or thousands of lobbyists per each congressional candidate down in DC to focus on the tax code. And they're trying to get every single loophole they can get in for big corporations, for special interests, and that's something else that needs to, we need to get rid of. So my solution 
is we need to overhaul the entire federal tax system. And that's payroll tax, personal income tax, corporate tax, dividends tax, estate tax, um, death tax, um, even the tariffs. And I would like to see a single national consumption tax, which um, one of the plans that's proposed out there right now is called the FAIR tax. So you can go to fairtax.org to learn more about it. And it's a simple consumption tax, which is about 120 pages total. And it becomes one tax. It makes it a lot easier to um, comply with your, and, and it's, it's only a tax on uh, the end goods. So any services or goods, that's the only time it gets taxed. So we get, we get rid of double taxation also. So if you go to the store, you buy that dollar bottle of water. Right now, there's about 23 cents out of the dollar of hidden taxes in it. That's part of that payroll taxes and corporate taxes that they just shove into it. You don't even see it. So the other thing, really nice thing that fair tax does, is it makes all these taxes transparent. And as one tax, it's simpler, but it makes these hidden taxes transparent. So everyone can see how much their government's costing them. And they're going to be shocked because it costs a lot as in every in the price of every single good. And what is your position on the Patient Protection Affordable, Affordable Care Act? Obamacare. Obamacare. Okay. Um, otherwise known as. Otherwise known as. Um, Obamacare, we couldn't afford it. Um, I think it gives out. It's really something that insurance companies put together because they're benefiting greatly from Obamacare because now they have about 40, 000, 40 million new people that you know, have to get insurance and you know basically it goes to the insurance companies. But beyond that, it's more than just being against the Obamacare because I think it should be done at the federal level, it should be done at the state level. Secondly, you go back just four, uh, six years ago, Bush passed the largest entitlement program in history with his prescription drug plan. So we have both Obamacare by the Democrats, uh, Bush care or Bush's you know, prescription drug care by the Republicans, and two huge entitlement programs, neither of which, which we can afford, which is one of the reasons why we've gone from about eight trillion dollar debt, you know, part of that, all that debt, that 16 trillion, is including all these new uh, entitlement programs. Now, as far as getting to the core of the issue is how do you make healthcare cheaper, more expensive, so everyone can afford it themselves? There's lots of different ways to do it. So I would like to see, and I, like I said, get it back to the state level, let the states figure it out. So we can have New Hampshire, we can have Vermont. So if you want a single payer system, do it at the state level. Vermont could have a single payer system. New Hampshire might want a more free market system where you can buy insurance from across state lines at half the price we're currently paying. Or you might be able to get your prescription drugs online from Canada or Europe. So there's lots of different ways to make it cheaper. Um, again, and transparency is a big thing. Doctors don't know how much, how much things cost. So if you go to your doctor, they're like, oh, you need a CAT scan. You can go to Conquer King, the hospital there, to try to get a CAT scan, but it might be like $4,800, which is how much it cost my wife to get the CAT scan last time she did. But if you were to call around the state, there's a place in um, either Nashville or Salem that's doing the same CAT scan for like 500 bucks. So it's definitely one of those things that consumers know how much things cost, they can shop around, and we take, Having the insurance companies part of this, whether it's the government or the insurance companies, it's putting a middleman in there that gets rid of that, um, the hurt, I guess you can call it, of, you know, or the price, the shock of the sticker or the price tag for these different things. You shop around for an oil change, you would shop around a little bit more for health insurance if we let the states have more ability in that way. Great, and uh, what is your position on the USA Patriot Act? repeal it. So this is another issue I disagree with President Obama on. Um, I would, it should be repealed, we should have never passed it. They should have read the bill before they passed it. Um, and the Patriot Act, the National Defense Authorization Act, these are both built bills that need to be repealed. They infringe on our civil liberties without doing a damn thing to, you know, protect us. You know, after 9-11, you had to secure the cockpit doors of the planes. That would prevent any new 9-11. We don't need, I don't even know how many pages, 4,000 pages, 6,000 pages, the Patriot Act. And yeah, you know, we don't need it. So the Patriot Act should be repealed. Um, and another reason why I can't vote for Obama again this time, because he reauthorized the Patriot Act. Great, now we'll open it up to um, questions from the audience. Um, Ron Paul seems to be the leader of the libertarians, uh, and um, one of the things that Ron Paul 
was against is he's against abortion. I would like to know how it being against abortion is libertarian. Um, I'm pro-choice, so you'll have to talk to Ron Paul about that one. I, I can kind of give you I can give you the debate because libertarians are split on the abortion issue, just like the majority of the population is. Um, Gary Johnson, our candidate for president, he's pro-choice. His take on it is viability of the fetus is when you're no longer allowed to abort a fetus. Um, so that's, you know, second trimester or something. You know, you can abort in the first trimester or something like that. And that's, you know, it's libertarians are typically pro-choice 100% of the time on everything. Ron Paul's take on it is that he thinks life begins at conception. I think it begins someplace else that's kind of foggy. Um, and also, I mean, I think if, if the government starts outlawing abortions again, then guys will start having abortions. I mean, it's just how the government works. It's not gonna work. People are gonna go out and seek abortions. However they do it, they'll just be illegal. And then we get into a health and safety issue for the women trying to get the abortion. So I think we should keep it legal, keep it safe, and leave it up to the woman. And it should be really between the woman and their doctor. Politicians should stay out of it. Yeah, insurance companies keep 30% of what you send them. And the reason, the other reason it's so high is us who are insured pay for those who aren't insured. When we're already treating 100% of us, why should changing the insurance uh, way up the price? Okay, so to repeat the question, insurance companies are already keeping 30% and why changing the way we do the insurance, would it increase the price? Why if we go to a single payer who, in Canada, the overhead is 4%, in this country, the insurance companies keep 30%. And I don't know what the last insurance company did for you, but I've never even had my temperature taken by an insurance company who keeps 30 cents out of every dollar I send them. Well, I have cat catastrophic insurance. So I pay, well, I started paying about 120 bucks a month. Um, it's gone up to, I think I'm paying $200 a month now. There's a five thousand dollars deductible with it, and there is. Um, uh, I also have a health. Savings Where does account. the average guy get the five thousand dollars? Well, you don't use it unless you need it. So for most people, I haven't needed it since I started my insurance when I was, you know, out of college. And I started buying. And your I, employees could come up with five thousand dollars if they get sick. Not. It's that's a deductible. So they get right. part of it. So. The other part of it is I have the HSA. So for the health savings account, each year I can put in up to 2,000. And lots of companies put in, match that HSA. You're not an average guy, income-wise. Check, check. Check, well, I'm, I'm talking about yeah. the average guy who works for the minimum wage at uh -huh. Walmart. Okay, Walmart no has- No benefits. Well, I, I, my sister works, sister-in-law works at Walmart, and she gets benefits. So it depends on- She's who, a low-wage worker. I, she, she's probably, Oh, not, she, no, not she, no. she doesn't work, she's not a cashier. Anyway, back to your question. So, you know, so how's my health, health insurance company helping me? You know, I, you know, I have a $5,000 deductible. I haven't had to pay it. I've been, you know, I've put money into my health savings account to save up for, you know, needs. But that's only because health insurance has been so much. When I started out, it was only 80 bucks, $80 a month, and a $2,500 deductible. But we've had, Governments putting in different regulations like, oh, now now my insurance company sent me a letter saying, oh, we, we have to raise your deductible because now we have to cover you for pregnancy. Well, I'm never gonna get pregnant, I'm a guy. So, but where my health insurance company, I like my health insurance company, is I just came down with Hodgkin's lymphoma six weeks ago. So now I have cancer, starting chemo. And so I've, I've hit my 5,000 and they will put you on a payment plan that the hospitals will to help you pay for it if you can't afford it out of pocket. So there, there are ways to get around it, and then, then the health hospitals will also you know, help you out there. Also, just tell me. I'm just wondering, where do you think the hospitals get the money? Do they not, I, you know, somebody is paying that bill. Yes, someone is paying that bill. It's people who have health insurance, and their insurance premiums are high, in order for the hospital to be able to skim off money to pay for the uninsured. Yep. If everybody's insured, what hope you get? You would hope. They They'll go earlier before they're in desperate, desperate. They, they could, they might, they might not. Or, or they might go, or they might all go earlier and go for, and for every single cold that you get. But that's, and they go to, well, hey, my wife has been going to the ER like every other day because her doctor says, oh, go to the ER for whatever it is because 
That's the way that they're sending her right now. And she's on Medicaid. She's on Medicaid. She has insurance. And they keep sending her to the ER. So if this current system's broken. I mean, I, I think you can all agree the current system's broken. It's a way, how do we get, how do we get a fix? Single parent might work. And I'm saying, I'm okay with single parent. Make it the state level, leave it at, get, don't do it at the federal level. Because that way we have 50 laboratories of innovation trying to figure out what might work best. And a single payer might be it. And it might be a mixture of single works payer. in every other modern country in the world. Yeah, we, we can debate that too, because there's lots of, you know, that, that's also for debate. It works in lots of countries, but you're also on a waiting list in, in England. You know? Okay, that's time. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry, you did get your 90 second statement now. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, so my website is hardymasha.com, H-A-R-D-Y, M-A-C-I-A. I'm a libertarian candidate for Congress in the 2nd District. Um, my top issues, balance in the budget, get in, ending the wars, bringing our troops home, and then fixing our corrupt, costly, complicated tax system. Um, which, one of the other benefits of it, it's actually, the fair tax is actually a green tax system, so it encourages people to recycle, reuse. Um, it also brings job, would bring jobs back here because no longer are companies going offshore for everything because the United States will be the place to incorporate again and that's where all the companies will want to bring their jobs back because uh, the fair tax, what it does is there's no business to business tax anymore. So they are now 23, 30% more competitive with countries overseas. So you're more competitive with China or Japan or wherever you're trying to compete with. So that's another benefit of the fair tax. Okay, um, marijuana was brought up earlier, legalize it, just like uh, the candidate for representative said. But Obama, he's increased raids on medical marijuana facilities, another reason why I won't vote, vote for Obama this time around. Um, it's something, and I think it needs to happen at the state level. We have three states passing voter initiatives this election. If a state block, sends it down, like with alcohol prohibition, the other states will follow, then we'll finally get it at the federal level. Thank you all.